and so that that worked that worked out for me so i i stopped working on the weapon at this point thinking it was enough and then now i'm i'm going back to uh let's say the last part of the the, the process which is like uh sort of finalizing and and adding the last details and and fleshing out the the last layer of things that i could add on this to to make it even more interesting visually uh in terms of of small details so here i'm adding literally uh, following the theme that I've been developing so far, I'm uh, literally having praise attached to the the the, the waist, uh, the, the the chest piece. So it was like a little bird and, and a rat and something undefined. But I found that going back to the shapes, the interesting shapes that I had created during the the 2D flat shape, I thought that even if I, I still struggle with the idea that they should be hidden by the waist plate, the the the, the thigh armor. But it, I kind of cheated, and because I just wanted to uh, connect those shapes together using uh, an actually uh, real element that made sense, and that that again like uh, echoes the the general theme. So, so yeah, so that, that's the, the 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 cool part after at the end, like it's all the little bits and pieces that you add that just enhance the story. And it's a real. It's real fun. It's real pleasure to do that at the end. Once you've passed all the the art part, it's like a, a, a reward. And I think soon I will start doing the final thing, which is painting the fur. Um, but you can see I'm still doing a little small adjustment here and there. I've said that bothered me. It's probably another day where I slept on it, or or two days where I slept on it, going back to it. There's always a lot of little things to fix once you've, you've let it rest. And now we're starting the first. So, um, so the, the, the fur is the is the same process but with a different material so um, you know you spend a lot of time looking at the photos first and try to analyze uh, how it works and then uh, and so and, and then first you try to describe form but here I'm using a, a brush that is uh, you know useful or like oriented towards like descript describing sort of hair patterns but after that it's just the same process of like describing the big form under first so like because those hair are attached to you know rib cage and arms and muscles and stuff like that and those have uh, specific forms and so you're trying to showcase them in the, the best way possible using the light setup that you have and trying to think of, of uh, generating again generating shapes that are interesting in themselves but also make sense uh, with the general lighting situation and form that they are on top, and in this case, like uh, the important, like you keep for fur, you keep everything soft as long as possible, and then you just add a tiny bit of details and art, art edges here and there to where, where on the out, outside where where they overlap on top of darker uh, values. And they're great tools to break, like to break up and bring variety to art edges. For example, you can see me doing it on the the the, the, the chest, uh, the waist, the waist part. Um, it is just like uh, like I was saying, it's like simultaneous contrast. So it, it they, they complement each other, but they also they, they help creating uh, lost edges here and there, and just bring variety and, and visual uh, interest to a different area. Mm, this is the, this is actually the first pass, and and you'll see that I will. Um, so it's like it's like a, like again like a, a rough uh, estimation of what the form is, and the more it goes, you see, the more I will go back and refine those, those form. But again, again and again and again, it's like. Uh, I'm constantly trying to just add volume informations and not surface details here or not useless details. Uh, 
it's like breaking down big volume in smaller volume without like completely losing the, the big volume under if that makes any sense and trying to be more accurate so here is like it's crucial to have the, the, the a very good reference material in this case you if you go back to the beginning of the when I was showing reference you'll see that I'm, I'm, I'm really looking at that cat's face and and then trying to pick all the information that I need to to describe this this character in the best way possible and again when I'm stuck I just switch to another area and I bring it to the same level as the focal point and back and forth so here also because it's the first pass I'm not bothering too much about uh, color temperature as you can see I'm using the colors that I painted since the beginning there but uh, I'm not trying to implement like too much uh, bounce light and reflective light because it's already very complicated to deal with the, the form first and also because like uh, it's the first time that I that I try to do this literally so I don't really know what I'm doing so you know try to make it easier for for yourself it's like one one thing at a time I'm try I'm still trying to get a feel of it at this point so and it's uh, like you just saw me I switch back and forth the the layer it's very important to keep that and to do the quick gut check on before after and see if like if you have the feeling that it was better before just straight up erase it right away trust yourself and you see again like back to the lost edges as I was saying this is another typical very strong example of like on the face um, how you only need to have very slight small dark accent here and there to make the brain understand what kind of uh, volume you're dealing with here and you're trying to describe and most of it is the same value connected all across and simple thing as well but like um, the, the shadow part never gets lighter than the light part for example even if you raise your value slowly you never get you never you never go lighter otherwise you just break your you just break your your light setup it just doesn't it's not believable anymore that's not how light works see like you're just trying to connect values together and uh, you, you only use the darkest values to describe volume where it needs to be for your brain to understand what you're talking about but not much much, much more than that and, it, and again it's like a balancing act like you add remove add remove add remove until you find the right balance very very hard I'm, I see it like verging on the on the towards the lion lion uh, face too much so and same as with the metal like the hairs have a certain noise or visual frequency patterns that you're trying to reproduce and also they follow they tend to follow the form and and uh, they go across each other in 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 terms of groups of, of of hair so you have to look at that and try to compose your own rhythm that kind of match that feeling there's a lot of variety of of, of shapes in there and, and rhythm but you have to try to never forget that they're all part of the they're all part of the same cat of the same bigger volume so even if you have, they, they have an internal rhythm but they also have like a macro rhythm that they need to respond to and, and, and be consistent with
and um, you see that I'm not adding, I'm not modifying it too much. I, I mean, for the longest time, I had uh, I had established that that volume from the beginning, and now it, it doesn't take too much work to. It's just like adding the little uh, details and overlapping to to signify where the like to, to kind of try to sell you how this cylinder made out of hair is going through space from the back to the front and how again is is it's if you observe your reference and you you will start to notice all these things overlap and they they do in a certain way and th what's interesting is that it generates again uh, patterns of of values ar value arrangement that are very unique and very unusual and 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 so well you just take that and reproduce it try to find the most interesting ones and, and, and replicate them, try to place them uh, wisely around. So they do that that job for you of selling that volume. That sense of depth. Putting like some dark accent to find where the core shadow of that volume is. My ears are terrible. I hate those ears. It's another one of the things that I, I struggle with constantly. So one of the easiest mistakes to do is to make too many strands, too many different strands. Again, it's like you it's the same principle of like not breaking your big shapes too much and it's so easy because you so easy to do to get lost in it when you're looking at reference because of course on a photo on the photo you can see every single air and stuff like that but it's it's a value pattern arrangement thing it's like um you, you again you should it's like an economy of movement thing you should, economy of energy don't you uh, try to take Oh, if you have if you feel like you've added too much, try to remove slowly, little by little, different elements and and see at which point it becomes satisfying or it becomes enough to describe what you want to to describe. It doesn't, and it, it more often than not, it doesn't take much, and you, that's where you bring it back. See here, I just adjusted the value of those those. Uh, Animals hanging on the waist to match sort of the armor values, and, and so it connects the the chest piece to the thighs, and that's really nice. It's like it creates all those uh, soft uh, lost edges. Spending some time on the eye. Again, another thing that is so fucking difficult, and, and because it's so subtle. And uh, I, I wanted to express a certain feeling in his stare. So then I think the first pass was kind of done on everything, so I, I finally started tackling the end problem. Which is like, um, it's like all the, the, the all the problems you can have in every other area except more difficult because it's a smaller real estate and the, the, the subtle there's so many volumes moving around and, and connected to each other in the area and so so it's difficult it's like it has to be solid but not too much and soft but not too much and Look, look very functional and, and make a lot of sense in perspective on top of that because it's wrapping around the, the cylinder of the weapon.
the good thing is like you don't have to be too accurate because it, again it's covered in fur so you make it like you can get you can like lose some of the details in the in the fur and it, it still works So here I'm, uh, if I remember, I mean, I, I didn't, and I should have, I didn't take any reference, or I didn't look at any reference for, and that, that's why I, it looks so bad. I didn't kind of want it to look, just, sometimes it's like, you just want to challenge yourself. Like, no, I can do it myself. I don't have to look at reference. And so it looks clunky until you fix it by looking at the reference. Here I'm propagating again that, that sort of uh, pattern that I used uh, on the upper part just to connect my design to make my design consistent across and to fill that area with something interesting to look at also it's because after staring at it for so long I just started to find that it was boring as it usually happens. bringing some life into the ears. So while this is happening, I'm thinking like uh, I haven't touched on the subject of uh, um, layer at this point, and uh, you might freak out seeing how many layers I have on the right. Um, it's something that I don't really pay attention because the um, well, I'll try to keep I try to keep the the, the most important element in, in just in terms of practicality of of, of like uh, how I can quickly interchange or move around stuff. But because of like, um, I forgot what it is. Like if you, when you're painting and you press option or command or control out something, it kind of automatically select the layer that on top when you, where, where the pixel on top are. So if you know, if you, if you practice that a bit, you can quickly select any layer of what you want to paint on in that area. For example, if I want to click, if I, if I click on the hand or click on any part, it will go. And you can see that's why the layers are switching quickly without me having to go over the layer panel and select them. And so it makes the, 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 the number, number of layer and finding the, the, the right layer uh, uh, not a problem anymore because the, 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 you have a shortcut to select the, the layer that you want right away. Um, I tend to do passes on cleaning my layer and regrouping things and merging things together uh, regularly, but um, I don't really care. Um, if it bothers you, they're just like cleaning up. But again, it's like a matter of saving time. So because you can quickly select your layer um, by by just clicking on the, I'll clicking on the, the the part of your picture, you all constantly keep your eyes on the on the painting, and that's what that's what matters really. Layer management is only only really it's only really important with for overlapping objects and stuff like that. And, and again, actually, in characters that we less in environment, I, I tend to be really uh, careful of how I keep my layers around uh, because um, there's so many so many elements uh, overlapping elements in a in an environment, and 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 you want to be able to keep things uh, separated so to move them around. But in a character, it's less the case. Um, so it doesn't really doesn't really bother me. There's some key layers, of course, to keep separated and, and try to not fuck up by painting on top, like the whiskers and and the weapons and stuff like that. But 
overall end of hand here. Um, but overall, it's 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 a non-issue I found. Since the, the, there's that shortcut, it's really it's really not a problem. So here we can see that the, the hands are starting to come together. I mean, I'm 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 starting to be somehow a little bit satisfied with it because it, it starts to make sense. I really feel like it's gripping. Because the, 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 the issue is like I was trying to keep that like sort of cat paw feeling, but at the same time bring in some of the anthropomorphic shapes of a human hand. And I mean, at the end, with the end product, I'm, I'm not entirely satisfied of it, but it, it just did the job. I didn't, didn't have more energy to work on it. Here I'm going back to the legs trying to fix my terrible design once again. Here again, adding visual interest in areas that are in, on the periphery, but are still important. Again, everything is a thing, so everything needs to have a little bit of uh, visual interest to it. Just in case that your eyes linger there, if you if the, the, the viewer's eye is going over that area, I want it to be interesting enough visually uh, to to keep your attention for a while. But you see, like it's it's still very loose and and, and very uh, non non really descriptive. Well, another layer. We're talking about layers. See, all the golds is is on is on one layer to be able to. Um, to modify the, the, the metal part under if necessary. Now we're going to the cape. Totally forgot about the cape. It's the thing that's been sitting there for a long time. So you see that the cape has taken less and less and less real estate from the start. We just saw the, the, the starting shape. Now we use this to create more symmetry and um, more movement in the back. Just bring one last material that will, that will just like um, underline uh, the, the structure and, and, and provide like a contrast compared to the left side with the with the tail it's just nice it's just like a nice nice uh, last thing to add I think generating a lot of noise and, and, and sort of color variation inside Adding a bit of patterns, just just tiny bits. It's like now we 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 like trying to be subtle when we add things. We, it's like the last layer of of uh, visual hierarchy that we're adding. So we don't want anything that stands out now. We just it's just like supporting. It's like the what do you do you call it the um, the extras on the on the on the cast of people. Those are the extras. Like the the thing in the background or the the th tertiary or uh, the, the 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 tertiary read tertiary what is the secondary third read tertiary I don't know now adding another gold element in the middle of, of the those two eyes which is kind of like a maybe a bat bat uh, head or something like that <coughs> sorry Polishing now. Now I, can, I could kind of call, call this phase like the, the, the end polish. The last, the last stage of like uh, going around everywhere and, and adding little bits and, and pieces of details. Final shape polish. Some it's crazy how some little details can do so much for you. In terms of selling the believability of a form, of a design or of a shape, uh, finally correcting that that perspective. God damn it! it took me so long to figure this out. And this took me so long to get the right feel. I see, it's like it's a small nudge, but it, it just makes all the difference to me. The, the problem is here, like. Is like there is a, the, the 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 pointy hand of the weapon at the bottom is starting to overlap too close to the thigh, 
and that will create visual not visual uh, tangent oh my god I'm like a I'm like a tangent freak and like I, it, it just will drive me insane for the longest time so I'll 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 kill mother and father to to remove any tangent and I might forget some of them I might not see some of them but like this it's like my top priority <laughs> most of the time is to uh, identify and kill any tangent the reason is uh, if you uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about is the reason is, is like tangent is like when there's two things that are way too close not really overlapping not really touching and it tends to attract your 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 attention a lot or in the case of depth it tends to kill the depth uh, you don't really understand where the object sits in space and uh, for me it's it's like one of the most uh, terrible crime you can do to your own uh, visual uh, arrangement is to leave those and I cringe so much when I see see them in other people's work it's, it's, really, it's a really a OCD thing I guess it's a disease another one um, now I'm switching the I'm redesigning the weapons uh, base I mean a joint into something more solid uh, again I think it's more for variety thing I think I think uh, was I playing God of War at this point? I think there might be uh, some of God of War influence there. Or well, like those massive solid weapons. Like this big, I like this big block chunk of metal with like those, uh, that surface texture, liney texture. It's really nice. And it just brings a contrast to the rest of the weapon, which is mostly curvy as well. Propagating the design. So I see that using the lines here that I just did on the, the three different faces is, is another way of selling um, the depth or the direction of that face because the values are not so different between each of the three faces, so one way to sell it faster to the to the viewer is to use those lines uh, in a way that goes across the form so to make it immediately understandable to the eyeball propagating the dots design bim 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 that's uh, very nice just finishes off this area duplicating some of the gold and bringing it to the to that square So this is like the you see how like the it's really bullshit this design it, it's really nondescript it doesn't actually describe any sort of like uh, logic patterns or anything it's just from far it looks like the noise is enough and the variety and the the irregularity of the the highlights on that gold plate is enough to kind of trick you into thinking this is a this is an intricate delicate design but it actually represents nothing. It's also something that you learn to do with uh, with practice. Is like um, not spending time on things that nobody sees, and just provide enough information for the, the viewer's brain to do the job for you. Bringing the hair coming out of the armor.
having fun. trying to bring a sort of a mean looking cart sort of cartony bat head here for some reason I think it's another another thing that I sort of noticed at some point on one of the reference I was like, let's not let's try let's try to put this here and see if it makes it better or not And because we're we're working on something that is such a small scale here, we we're still trying to 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 stick to the form, like describe the form properly. But if we even even less detail than before, even less variation than before, we really keeping it simple. Um, core shadow, main light, bounce light. That's it. And that's that should be enough. And color variation in the transition colors. See here also is just scribbling, scribbling that suggests ooh a very intricate delicate uh, design, but it's actually just random scribbles with the right values and colors just tricks you to believe. Well, the reason is because in, in other places in the image you have uh, uh, some, something with the same material that is actually more detailed, so you your eyes the, does the job of, in your brain links those together and, and kind of put them on the same level, even if they're smaller, less detailed your brain fills the gap and, and make you think this is all as intricate and as as uh, delicate and complicated. Adding highlights and like f figuring out, s try to make the f f sully make the, the folds from the cape come out and bring a, an interesting variation in, in shapes there as well, cleaning up the edges. Now we can see me just sort of like cleaning up layers, adding little things. So again, it's like being obsessed with making every area interesting and, and sort of finished enough looking and refining it just takes time just sit down patiently go go through everything and even at this point like you can still look at reference and then find things to add it, it's not too late it's never never too late to improve finish everything So now I think I'm gonna it's gonna come to the part where I do a second pass on the on the fur. And I'm gonna try to enhance the, the form again. So what I did is like did a because the, the fur is is uh, is white, right? So it's gonna stand out on the darker base. So I darkened the, the the core cylinder part and then on top of that using either a, a painting or an erasing uh, hairbrush and just uh, chipping at it. So one trick to make uh, fur realistic is to pay really attention to the the edges and the hair that the hair that uh, stand out from those edges and try to make them really all of them make re them really unique and varied enough so none of there's zero repetition there because there never is in reality and also you you notice that it's also super easy uh, trick to have some of the hair come across the main uh, direction of of the the general strands that you're painting and that because that happens a lot in in, in a normal fur and that that just first of all enhance the depth but it's just in, in just for variety's sake and visual entertainment, it just creates those uh, unusual uh, composition. It just works. 
So you see, I'm going around and erasing because I'm using the same brush everywhere. So you you, you kind of have a you tend to have a certain repetition happening because of that. So you're going back and erasing and modifying each strand that look too similar to the one next to them. And it's like the it's, it's this is the the, the randomness of of uh, that that occurs in nature, the randomness in in repetition. Like you have something that repeats, but it's also different. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, and and doing that by hand is extremely difficult because we tend to the brain, human brain tends to repeat patterns naturally without thinking. So you have to really watch yourself and go back and correct and and put a lot of energy into making it look naturally random. But still, you designing it. You're designing it, but you're it. Like you, you're forcing the natural randomness. You try to make it look naturally occurring, even if you're designing it. If that makes any sense. So here now, I'm, you, see, you can see me. I'm introducing the 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 cooler uh, sky reflection on the fur, which is gonna come in with nice contrast with the bottom warm layer of the fur. The same same way that I did on the armor, and I'm going back and, and actually sort of destroying a lot of the first layer and um, redefining big form because I thought that uh, it was too flat like too part of the same uh, shape so uh, redefining the form the big the big form like the chest the neck and going back there and, and reassessing those big sort of spheres you could simplify them like that there's all like just big spheres of hair uh, all uh, in, uh, intertwined but they do have a certain logic to them because they're following the, the, the skeleton and the, and the muscle under them and they have there's groups there so you have to sort of like indicate those groups too and this is what I'm doing here going back and, and using darker values to reassess all my forms and the connection between them and you see when I switch back and forth you can definitely see the improvement right away in terms of like uh, it just feels more solid that's the one you're looking for. Even if it's a very soft uh, material, extremely soft, it, it has a solidity to it because it is. It is a, a solid object in the end. So the, um, the indirect light, of course, is, is showing up in all the parts that are not directly lit by the satellite. So this is where you see me adding uh, bluer, bluer colors there. The um, the subsurface scattering in the ear, the translu the, the the fact that the it, actually I'm not sure it will be actually be happening. Because uh, the, the the light is not coming from the back through the ear, I'm not sure that would be that pink, but it just looked cool, so I just left it there. It's just nice accent there. It would tend to happen more on the right here. The left here is a little exaggerated, but whatever, it looks good. Good enough. Here it's uh, something that I, again I went back to look at my cat and I saw that uh, on some part of the body you can you can see, especially the arms, you can see. Or the neck, you can see that it creates some of those um, horizontal, no, like circular strand groups that uh, on top of each other. Like uh, I'm thinking of like uh, when you have a pineapple that is uh, uh, cut by a professional, it kind of creates those layers uh, on top of each other of like um, donut shapes, and it's kind of like the same with those hairs. So you can see they create those horizontal lines or like those the rock formation. You can see that on rock formations as well, lines. Anyway, uh, it's terrible, terrible uh, analogy, but <laughs> it doesn't actually look that. It just feels like that to me. But that's what I did there. And I also noticed that on the head, you have much shorter hair that tends to show up there. So again, like uh, using, trying to find proper brush that does that for you. Because the, um, if you would paint that by hand, it would again you would kind of generate something that is too regular and not natural looking. So by using a third party like the brush to do it for you, you kind of generate a randomness uh, that looks more natural.
I think here I'm using like a grass brush to do the those the hair of the chin. All this stuff is that it's not my own brushes stuff that I collected from the classics, the the Craig Mullins and the Jamie Jones and the. So you can get probably get oh you already have them. And that's why I'm not talking about it. Although it's it's really important to have the right tools, of course, and you should look for the best tools out there. So I see, like uh, like I was saying, fur is not one; it's not like consistent all across. It really varies a lot from the different part of the body. Sometimes the longer, sometimes the shorter. Sometimes the strands are really big. Sometimes the strands are really small. Sometimes they stack up in a certain way. And also, all the volume, how the volume is directed toward the viewer, it will it will just look different. So uh, you have to look at a real animal and this kind of cat and manipulate it and see how those strands work out. And then on top of that, right now you can see that um, it, at the end of certain big strands, it tends to curl in some random ways and it stands out a little bit especially on darker value under it so that's what I'm doing right now just like the like I was saying that the fur is mostly soft and then you have different like a few key areas that you define and it just creates a very nice uh, illusion it's all a matter of uh, choosing wisely where you put your detail and where you put your, uh, your the visual interest so it's a composition issue again. It's a composition problem. But you see, like I'm keeping each layer on uh, each uh, each important part on, on layer, especially here because we have a lot of overlap, and we want to be able to have the flexibility to adjust. So it's crucial here to to work with layers for sure, because you're going to be sculpting those each strands. This is very important. You're going to be sculpting them carefully. And like um, this is a case of like the you have to repeat like you have to do sort of the right brush strokes in one go. So you control Z a lot until you get the right brush stroke in one go, uh, and that will make it look like natural and and done uh, effortlessly. Whereas you 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 control Z 250 times, but in the end you got the one brush strokes that made it look like you did it you did it right away. And you see that this this layer, this this final layer of, of detail works because we, like uh, like you saw me before, I went and reworked the base layer, the, the main uh, description of the, the 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 big volume under it. Uh, without that, doing this would be useless, and would would not kind of fix or enhance uh, whatever was under it. I can see here. I don't know if I will uh, modify it, but this high bothered me. This is. Anatomy is, is a bit wrong here. I don't know if I ended up fixing that. So, for example, so it's like a, every, when the form turns away, that's where you have all the, the little air coming out and being really visible. And you can see that the, the part of the volume that is facing us, you have very little detail, but you have more, what, what's there is more the, 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 the little color detail. Like the the part of the fur that is uh, sort of unified and one big shape is the the, fi the 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 part that is facing us. And as soon as you start turning away, then you start seeing the small strands of hair coming out, and so that's how you can think about it. What they say is, like, I think, is like light is for colors and shadow is for form description. So that's that's kind of the point here. It's like all the light areas tends to show you. The color of that, uh, the color of that material, and then as soon as it turns away, so it's like stepping into the shadow part, and you you have the descriptive part of the material, which is like showing uh, what what it is made of, which is here like little strands of hair, you know, of different uh, shapes and forms, and like now we're slowly building up the color accents, and the sort of shininess, the how do you say? I don't know the the, the the highlights on the fur, which you notice that they're not as strong as the metal because it's not as such a reflective material, but it still is a little, especially if the 
doesn't look like this guy it takes a lot of, of, of bath or anything but it, it kind of looks dirty and everything but it still has a, a little bit of shine to it which allows you to bring uh, this kind of the color saturation accent which is makes like the uh, great contrast with the warmth of the shadow area which is like it's an, another case of uh, simultaneous contrast that you want to take advantage of, advantage of anytime you can but again, like you, you have to watch out to not be too heavy-handed. This is, as I say, it's an accent, so it should be like 20% or 10% of, of your whole thing. It's, that's how you can make the most out of it, how the effect works. Otherwise, it just becomes the the majority of your, your colors and it like defies the purpose. But this part is fun. I mean, that's another reason why I kept it for the end. Is like because it's organic, you can get away with a lot. Like it's it's so much more forgiving than than hard edged stuff. Like like the the armor, um, you can get away with a lot. You can have fun with organic shapes like that, and you can come up with a lot of different uh, of your own uh, form arrangement without worrying too much about having it being uh, credible or not because. Again, it's much more forgiving. Here, just cleaning up my layers because I started noticing I was painting on the wrong layer. So here also I'm, I'm adding the like I was saying around the the crotch area that ends tend tends to curl because there's a lot of friction in those areas so you want to it's kind of nice uh, nice details nice variation. And I'm using the same uh, solutions that I found for the rest of the cat and applying them to the hands. And see that I, I carefully apply details while really being careful not to uh, break the main volumes that I created before. Going back on the cape a little bit. So we're coming at pretty, we're pretty close to the end now. It's a final, final, final plus plus adjustment. Cleaning up layers, grouping things. I like to you see that like I'm, I'm currently grouping all the different iterations that I did. Might just. I keep them just in case in another job I might reuse them. I don't know. It doesn't hurt. Bringing a uh, bringing out this cylinder out a little bit, adding the reflection like bounce light. All these tiny again. This is this is not. It's like a volume, volume details. Like again, you, you're trying to enhance the reading of those forms. That's it. That's all you're doing. Uh, 
adding that uh, cold warm dynamic again finishing the blade fixing perspective or just cleaning up the edge I guess 